Welcome everyone, I'm Exceptional, and I hope you are too. Welcome back to Stardew Valley. Coming into fall of year two, we find ourselves pretty deep in Ginger Island progress. As I continue knocking off goals on the island itself, my focus is starting to shift towards some of those perfection goals. Let's jump in. New season, same problems. As is tradition, the first couple of days in the season are geared towards getting our fields working for us. With all of my fancy new enchants on the gear, it's getting a lot easier to do this. Being able to hoe and water in the exact radius of my iridium sprinklers is pretty awesome. After prepping the top field, I grab a few items from the chest that I'm not letting you see. Yet. I head over to Pierre to sell my goodies, making a cool 600,000 gold. I won't spoil too much about my secret chest, but um, it's not empty. The plan for fall again this year is to go heavy on pumpkins, and I do mean heavy. 4,000 should be enough, right? I make sure to buy a few of every single one of his other available seeds because I want to start converting Ginger Island. That farm is primarily wheat at the moment, and I want to fill it with all of these crops that I have to grow in order to get the polyculture achievement and then convert it into a profit-making machine. The remainder of day one and start of day two are all geared towards filling in as many pumpkins as I can. I fill out all of my existing sprinklers, but I still have a lot of farm space, so it's time to expand this farm. I would have been capable of doing this before if it weren't for those darn battery packs. I keep expanding the field all the way till the end of day two, thinking to myself, you know what, I can fit a couple more sprinklers down here. I'm not going for maximum efficiency here, but hey, over half coverage on each of them is good enough. On the morning of day three, I decided it's time to enjoy this massive house of mine a little. I stroll on up to my attic space in order to enjoy some breakfast. You know when you first move into a place and you kind of have like one room half set up and the rest of the house is empty? That's kind of how I feel, barring the fact that I've lived here for like a year and a half at this point. Ah, uh, let's decorate a little bit. The bed can go here, the lamp can go here. Ugh. Say magnifique. I'm done for now. And now for a quick update on what's happening inside the greenhouse. Coffee is still the predominant crop in here, but as you can see on the first row, the ancient fruit is expanding. I will be converting this greenhouse to be fully ancient fruit, but for now it's also growing my rare seeds on the right side. I'm not entirely sure I want to switch over to these crops for making profit. Either way, amassing large amounts of these seeds isn't really possible without patience and seed makers. With the main farm pretty much buttoned up for the time being, it's time to head back out to Ginger Island. I'm making sure to grab as many varieties of seeds as I possibly can to start growing out there. On the way through town, I pick up a new community board quest and Island Ingredients is available. This is probably one of the most exciting ones to me and of course she's asking for the ginger option. The other two options are taro root and pineapple, both of which I have planted at the Ginger Island farm already. Just waiting on this quest, so of course she goes with the ginger option, which we have to find 100% manually. The first stop on Ginger Island is Keys Walnut Room to grab a new quest here, Skull Cavern Invasion, I'll take it. Then after a quick loop of the island looking for ginger, I decide to visit the trader really quickly. As I mentioned before, they've got a couple of things I want to buy, most notably the recipes at the bottom. Part of the perfection achievement is crafting and cooking every single recipe in the game, so I need these. I update my sticky note shopping list and move on. I then spend the rest of the day in Skull Cavern not going for the 100th floor, but more just going down with Monster Musk and having fun. Since I have started to put the bare minimum of effort into my social stuff, I am getting a lot more of these cutscenes. Unless something has changed, this is the only time you will ever see Alex's dog. Okay, he's real. I was starting to wonder. The two main ways of getting ginger are hoeing it up from the little wormy spots on the ground or from killing the tiger slimes. There's a small cluster of them that spawn daily on the island, so I'll be farming these, looking for wormy spots, and spending my days in the ginger island mines looking for more ginger. And if you thought my ginger island farm looked a little messy before, check this out. The wheat's gone and I'm planting down a huge variety of seeds. They're all mixed in together, growing on different timelines. This island is gonna be a mess for a little while. The goal being polyculture, selling 15 of every single crop type. At the end of the day, I make sure to check my raccoon buddy to see if he has a new quest for me, and yes. The items for these bundles are randomized, so I can't really prepare for them and just kinda have to react and hope I have it. As you can see in my inventory though, the plan tomorrow is mining. With my bombs and staircases and rock candy, I unleash pandemonium down here. 
This level of insanity is all I wanted when I first made my way out to the desert. The Skull Cavern invasion requires getting down to level 100 in the mine, but sometimes there's floors like this that are just too awesome to pass up. Forget the resources I'm getting, this is just fun. Well, maybe a little too much fun. We're gonna take this one frame by frame. It looks like I managed to swing the hammer three frames late. At 60 FPS, that's 50 milliseconds late. So close, but maybe danger in the deep with Monster Musk was ill-advised. I saw it as just kind of taking my licks when I realized that fate might be pointing me in a different direction. Our starfruit kegs are ready to rotate and it's so cool, I'm actually rotating them as they complete. I managed to replace them all, but this is gonna be down to the wire making it to bed. Um, I'll drink a coffee for a little extra speed? Come on, come on, make it, make it. Nope. 14 tiles from home, eh, 20 from bed. Surprisingly enough, dying in the middle of the Skull Cavern invasion does not complete the quest. As it happens, I did get enough key gems from the monster loot though that I have enough to grab three galaxy souls. I head back home to forge them onto my hammer and I have a problem. After getting the first one forged on, it looks like heading out to those ginger island mines is gonna be required for more than just ginger. I need cinder shards, which is exactly where I go next. Also, now after unlocking all of what I consider the important stuff on Ginger Island, I can finish the last couple of parrot unlocks. I smash my way through once again to the end of the mines, collecting as many cinder shards and ginger as I can along the way. By the end of it, I've got enough to finish forging our hammer, so let's finish this upgrade. For a total cost of three galaxy souls and 60 cinder shards, I now have the infinity gavel. Tja, my hammer's about as uber as it can go now. Awesome. The morning of Sunday, the 7th of fall, presents an opportunity to finish that Skull Cavern invasion. The quest resets on Monday, tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to get this done today. As I mentioned in previous seasons though, the Desert Merchant on Sundays alone will trade Jade for Staircases. My Crystallariums have been pumping Jade since I got them. I buy 96 staircases and let's get this done. With what I bought combined with what I brought, I have just enough staircases to get me down past level 100. So it's a little cheesy, but zip, zip, zip. And before I know it, I'm hitting floor 100, completing the quest. I didn't exclusively use ladders on the way down, popping out anytime I thought a floor felt interesting. Remember, as you get lower into Skull Cavern, you have a higher chance of finding Iridium. Now in the hard mode version, that also applies to radioactive ore, which I do want some of. I take the rest of the day in the mine getting down to the 160s before heading home. And the next day, the focus shifts once again to getting ginger and cinder shards. Yes, I do still want cinder shards, I'm not done with them yet. After running that to completion, it's once again off to Key's Walnut Room to choose another quest. Um, no, you've already taken four of my prismatic shards, you don't get any more, danger in the deep. Now that I have the Galaxy Souls, I want to try and plan out my next key purchases. I decide to buy the recipe for the Heavy Tapper, part of the reason why I want Radioactive Ore, and I don't have enough gems to get the Horse Flute, but I really want the Horse Flute. I want to take a quick moment to thank you in the comment section for giving me tips. Since I maxed out my skills, I've been just trashing all of these books, but they're really useful. You can actually sell them back to the bookkeeper for really good items, actually. Thank you so much for helping me become a better player. I'll also show off the farm computer really quickly. It gives a quick and dirty little readout of what's going on at your farm. As you can see here, I've only got 137 pieces of hay in the silos, so let's go correct that real quick. The next morning, it's off to the tree farm with a few of those heavy tappers in hand. I want to throw the heavy tappers on these mystic trees that I've slowly been accumulating more of. I want more treasure totems to try and finish off the museum, but after that, I have a different plan for the syrup. Your hint is that it involves the raccoon. And then the quest for ginger continues. My ginger loop is coming in from the beach, walking up to the dig site, then taking the fast transport back to the farm. I follow the loop left, killing the slimes and looking for more wormy spots. The reason I'm choosing to emphasize this is because the ginger quest is legitimately annoying to me. Maybe, just maybe, my methods can help you get through it should you find yourself needing to. Instead of heading to the ginger island mine though, I'm heading back to the Stardew Valley mine to restart Danger in the Deep once again. Hi ho! Hi-ho. I'll give you a quick peek inside my production chest. Anything that needs to get processed ends up in this chest. 
I'm also using it to collect items for Clint to process, as well as the items for my theater bundle. That is all greenhouse coffee, by the way. When I say I go in there every other day, I do mean it. And then it's a whole bunch of time spent in the mines continuing danger in the deep. Floors 40 through around 60 are by far my favorites, especially when you have the napalm ring and monster musk on. Another thing to note is that now that I'm done investing battery packs into repairing the ginger island boat and my iridium sprinklers, I'm able to invest them now in more crystallariums. More crystallariums, more jade, more staircases, more better. The next day, I continue pushing hard in the mines, making it almost all the way down, floor 110 by 130 in the morning. All right, I'll finish it in the morning. No matter how much that ready starfruit keg tempts me, I need to focus, focus, man. It only takes me till nine in the morning to get down to floor 119 and, oh, there's the ladder right there. Quest done and I wanna go play with some kegs. The keen-eyed among you will notice that I was out of starfruit though, and I don't really feel like putting strawberries back in. I did have an excessive amount of coffee beans though, so that's what I'm putting in. The thing with coffee though is that it processes so quickly in the kegs that I can actually just continuously move around this area. It takes me longer to empty and replace the kegs than it does for the kegs to brew the coffee. And regardless of the monotony or tedium of doing it, I'm gonna process all of that coffee. And I just keep at it all the way through until the next afternoon. When that glorious requires five beans message pops up for the final time, oh, that's good. I had originally planned to start refilling the kegs with wheat for more beer, but after that much kegging, yeah, let's do strawberries. Seven days away from these kegs instead of coming back tomorrow sounds A-OK -okay by me. I mean, I do still have coffee rolling in, but I'm hoping that I do not need to process any more for the rest of the playthrough. If all of that wasn't exciting enough, we have our pumpkins ready on the morning of day 14. Heck yeah, I'm gonna ignore those till tomorrow. Pumpkins only take 13 days to grow, so I have a little bit of leeway and would rather have the fields matched up. It's then off to Clint's for the umpteenth time, processing geodes and hoping to finish off that museum. Not today, so I head back out to Ginger Island to trade in those key gems I just got. I buy my horse whistle, thank you very much, and I have enough gems left over to buy something else. I feel the next most important item here, especially since I have social goals on my mind, is the key to the town. That's gonna give me access to any building, any room, any time. For context, the businesses are only open during certain hours of the day, and you have to be a certain friendship level to get into people's bedrooms. That came out creepier than I intended. The horse whistle allows us to summon our horse to us anywhere. Well, anywhere outdoors. So I take my pony on a quick little scoot down the beach and we're gonna be playing with some more treasure totems. Once again, super not optimal, but super fun. Let the hoeing carnage begin. Oh, so satisfying. The next step is then to start chopping down our Franken crop. Are you noticing something I did wrong though? I need 15 of every crop, not eight. With the power of hindsight, I definitely could have done this better, going for less wheat and more polyculture insanity. We'll get there in the end. Something else I haven't mentioned is that I've changed my outfit a little bit. The gold shirt is, yeah, pretty and all, but you can actually wear your pan on top of your head. Let me just take a moment to express how the pan is now viable in my mind. I feel it used to be dead inventory weight before, but now that it can be up upgraded, enchanted, and worn on my head? Sold. And I never thought I would say that about the pan. And one final thing at the end of day 14. Along with the crops that I'm shipping for our polyculture, I wanted some new toys. Toys require money, so I decided to sell my first stack of starfruit wine. High million gold richer and feeling good. The next morning, the rest of the field has caught up, so it's time to harvest and replant our pumpkins. It's looking like the home farm field is producing somewhere around 1,500 crops for us now. I pop all of those into the production chest, which is looking a lot nicer with all that coffee gone. I then start an equal parts tedious and equal parts satisfying process. I'm going through all of my chests, making sure to sell one of every single item. That's gonna help us towards another perfection goal of shipping one of every item. Now that I have the money, I'm definitely looking for more free access to the world. I head down to the wizard's tower because he can build us some pretty awesome buildings. 
for the cost of 1 million gold, 20 iridium bars, 10 coconuts, and 10 cactus fruit, I can build the Desert Obelisk. This is a static building on your farm, which acts exactly like the warp totems do. Except this one is infinite. That hodgepodge of items ends up netting us another 23,000 gold. Not bad, honestly. The next morning, our greenhouse's banana trees have started producing, so I'm gonna take a single banana with me out to Ginger Island. I make it down to Willy's, and that's when it hits me that today is a festival. On festival days, key to the town or not, you're not getting in. So, fine. I head back to the farm and craft an island warp totem. I want that island obelisk, but I need 10 bananas, and right now I have one. Actually, make that zero, but this is my second last task to finish off all of the golden walnuts on Ginger Island. All I have left is the questline from Birdie to get the pirate's locket. I then spend the rest of the day hunting down Ginger. By the end of this pass through the mines, let's check out how our progress is going. Out of 100 required Ginger pieces, I have harvested 69. Nice. You'll notice the strange little blue beans in my inventory. These are for key crops for another key quest. It rewards the most key gems out of any of the quests, but I feel it's the most difficult to pull off. I wasn't actually sure if I'd be able to complete the quest, but I wanted to do anything that wasn't mining. The pickled eggplant is for the raccoon, by the way. Pickled eggplant and cave carrot juice were his requirements this week. Strange, but fulfillable. The next morning, I'm off to the desert to spend even more money. It'll probably be a couple of weeks before I actually get these in the ground, but I'm buying 2,000 starfruit seeds. Gee, I wonder what Ginger Island is going to be converting to, eh? I make it back to the valley and go visit Robin to spend even more money. I buy out all of the remaining upgrades, so this house is now as big square footage-wise, or square tileage-wise, as it can possibly be. What am I going to fill all that space with? I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Any time lately that I see a townsperson, I'm giving them a salad and a chin waggle. These little convenient chat and gift sessions are definitely going to make my life easier once I commit to getting the town to like me. Every single villager, every single time, up to their maximum gifts per week. On my usual ginger loop today, I decided to pop inside of the mushroom cave. I haven't had a lot of motivation to come in here, especially because my foraging skills are more aimed at woodcutting at the moment, but hey, this guy's new! Some more new things in 1.6 is that not only can you use Joja to pay for the community center, but apparently you can pay for walnuts and perfection points. His here seems to special in legally complex matters if you catch his drift. I have words for him that I'm not including in the video. But if you're swimming in cash, supporting Joja, and after a perfection goal, this guy seems to be your ticket. 500,000 gold per percentage of perfection. I'm gonna pass, but let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see a Joja-style playthrough in the future. This house is so stinking big right now. I felt bad about how empty it was, so here's a couple of random items I got from those treasure totems. Oh, wow, look at this place. It's really starting to fill out. The next day, the tappers are ready up at the tree farm, and yes, once again, I have been doing this every cycle. As you can see, without the speed grow on the trees, it grows pretty inconsistently, but most of these trees are growing up. I'll be looking to cut them down and replace them with maple soon enough. I'll once again leave you in suspense as to why. And it's more hunting for ginger. I always appreciate when I find little clusters like this. Another tip for the ginger quest is that any tiles that you hoe, make sure to pickaxe them to revert them to the normal terrain. This will keep ginger spawning more frequently on those tiles. And this was the moment that I realized the difference between 15 and 8. I fill in Frankenfield 2.0, and I'm really looking forward to when I can take this field into its final form. I felt that I could try going after that key quest, given how fluid the Ginger Island field is right now, but yeah, I'm not convinced. By the end of day 18, though, I've realized that I'm running out of things to do that aren't social. It's time to start pulling out and getting gifts ready. With those rabbit feet being universally loved by every character except for Penny, she gets diamonds. On the morning of day 19, let's check our ginger progress. 96 out of 100, with 17 shipped. Well, I have a solution for that right quick. I grab half the stack and, well, hey, that's 83. That's how much I needed. I didn't trust it being that easy, so I double check the quest and yeah, we're good. That gets shipped overnight, and we should be able to get our last four pieces of ginger today. 
Another nifty bit of rotating stock is in Krobus's shop. Every single Friday, he will have one Iridium Sprinkler for sale for 10,000 gold. I have not been diligently grabbing these, though I have every time it's been convenient. There are two things that I typically wait for before decorating my farm. Outside, I'm waiting on the golden clock, we'll come back to that, but inside we have these furniture catalogs. These did exist before, but 1.6 has added so much furniture. I want to collect as many of these catalogs as I possibly can before going hard on decorating. Another, another thing to set up for is cooking every recipe. There are a few items that I find a little bit more tedious to get my hands on, so I crafted 33 crab pots to bring to the beach. I also changed my fishing profession to not requiring bait in crab pots because yes, I am that lazy. Day 19 was very much an all over the place, nailing off objectives kind of day. I have a quest to bring May Pal Serop to the Sea Crit Woods. The educational system for bears seems to have really declined since the days of the Berenstein Bears. Understandably, I'm a little bit wary of the speaking and writing bear. I don't recall casting speak with animals on myself. But in exchange for maple syrup, our new bear friend gives us a new power. Salmon berries and blackberries are now going to be worth three times the gold. How relevant is that going to be in this playthrough? Well, probably not at all, to be honest. The completionist in me needed it. If ever you're looking for a dense cluster of townsfolk, always go to the saloon on Friday nights. Just like the bear in the woods, I've been knocking off as many of my quests as I can. This last little batch should about do it. My community board quest this week is fishing up trash for Linus. I figured a clever place to do this would be fishing in the mines. I have to fish up and dispose of 20 pieces of trash, and it's pretty common in the mines. On the morning of day 20, I organize myself, grabbing all of the pumpkins that I need to rotate the kegs, as well as the materials I need for another toy. I visit the wizard's tower, and this time for 1 million gold, 10 iridium bars, 10 dragon teeth, and 10 bananas, I can get the island obelisk. Yes, please. Every single time I make an island warp totem, it costs a dragon tooth, which are not the most common items. Won't be needing to do that anymore. But before I play with my new toy, I go and I swap over all of the kegs to produce pumpkin juice. Completing the island ingredients quest, the ginger one that I just slaved over, we unlock the solar panel recipe. Every seven sunny days that the solar panel C nets us one more battery pack. I love passive resources. Like I mentioned, I am hurting on a couple of resources, only being able to craft four for now. I then empty out the crab pots, the lobster and shrimp being the most important things that I'm after. Then it's off to Ginger Island to pop down the cellar panels on this beautiful sunny day and continue with our polyculture goals. I wouldn't say that I'm close yet, but definitely getting there. Back in town, the saloon is hopping on Saturday nights as well, just with slightly less people. I take a quick scroll through my relationships real quick, and these are the results of salads and quests. That's a great head start on the socializing. Another habit that I mentioned early and haven't really mentioned again is making sure to check the TV on every single Sunday. There's a new Queen of Sauce recipe every Sunday, and even this far into the game, I'm still learning new recipes. I'm also making sure to check the Wednesday reruns just to be diligent, but I'm not sure it's necessary. On top of those new recipes trickling in, all of the work I've been doing with friendship has also been granting a ton. Feel free to verify this because I ran out of fingers as I was counting, but I believe there are 35 out of 81 recipes that are exclusively available from friendship. And once again, pursuing perfection requires all of these. Exciting news on the 21st of fall, year two, I am turning in the quest to Birdie and these are my last golden walnuts. Before completing her quest, we also get the recipe for Fairy Dust. Fairy Dust allows you to advance any machine by one stage instantly. For example, the wine in our cellar right now is taking 56 days to go through three stages of aging. With three Fairy Dust per bottle of wine, I can now convert it from base quality to iridium quality instantly. Or, you know, as long as it takes me to click three times. It also works on things like furnaces, completing the smelting instantly, but those things I can wait for. 56 days for iridium wine is a long wait. I'll take a quick moment to show you the perfection tracker in Key's Walnut Room. As you can see, 130 out of 130 golden walnuts. Awesome possum. You can also see my progress towards the other perfection goals with a total completion so far of 46%. 
Not bad, and now that we're done with golden walnuts, that's one less thing to worry about. It's Sunday, so I take my now 198 jade out to the desert to exchange for staircases. The rest of the day, and honestly quite a bit of time in the next few days, is going to be spent mucking about in the hard mode mines. I need the ores, and the monster musk in combination with the parrot is giving me a steady stream of thousands of gold. I've also now figured out that eating ginger gets rid of the nauseated debuff, so I'm cruising. The next morning, I'm processing the key fruits that I harvested through the seed makers, trying to expand the crop to the 500 that I need. This is the last time I'll be mentioning this key quest because I will fail it. This and a bunch of extra effort goes to complete waste. I also decided on day 22 to check and see if I had everything that I needed for the missing bundle. That's the movie theater bundle I keep mentioning and not realizing that you don't know it's a movie theater yet. My bad. After coming up with a plan for those, it's back to the mines. That's gonna be another 5,000 gold in like 25 seconds of footage. The entirety of day 23 is spent in the mines and on day 24, eehoo. This Ginger Island farm is a mess. You can see me just kind of stopping and thinking for a moment. I was doing mental math. I have figured out that the number of seeds that I have planted and growing right now, though I would be able to get one more crop out of it, will fall well short of the 500. I know I said I wouldn't mention it again, but you know, this was the moment of defeat. And yeah, like, I'm out of here. I don't need to harvest this right now. Then it's off to cleanse to mass process geodes, golden coconuts, mystery boxes, everything. Again, in hindsight, I should have waited until after the key quest expired because I'm getting more beans from this. That is just wasted loot table as far as I'm concerned. On day 24, the next batch of pumpkin juice is also going into the kegs. And it's back to my favorite floors in the mine. As a fun little creator's note, I'm actually getting really good at recognizing the sound waveform of harvesting kegs versus mining. You know you spend too many hours staring at your own footage when. The next morning is a lovely little tree farm update as I'm grabbing the tappers again. It's definitely getting close. Then it's off to Ginger Island to deal with this mess a little. Pretty much everything that I'm harvesting is just getting dumped straight into the shipping box, except for the beets. I have to stick 10 beets in the mare's fridge as part of another quest, so I'm keeping some of those. Then my raccoon friend needs a smoked ghost fish, so I'm down in the Stardew Valley mines trying to get one of those. Ah, man, these darn key beans, go away! A large portion of the day is spent doing a lot of maintenance and pursuing little things like that, and at the end of the day I'm able to set up a whole bunch more solar panels. Battery packs are something that I'm not able to buy en masse, so I feel it's very much worth spending the iron on these right now. And I know it's shocking, but more time in the mines. Can I just point out that a few days ago I mentioned the parrot and we've made a hundred thousand gold since then. Oh yeah, this little cluster right here, 8,250 gold? No problem. Another awesome thing that I've been collecting down here as part of the monster loot table are these sprinkler nozzles. We'll see more of those when I'm ready to convert Ginger Island into its final form. The next morning I realized that I didn't get a new key quest this week, so hopefully there's one I can nail off in like two days. Looks like I have nine days to complete the key cuisine, which is a really awesome one. For this quest, you have to ship 100,000 gold worth of fresh cooked food. This might seem a little bit daunting, but I have a lot of coffee. Three coffees can be cooked into one triple espresso shot, which I've been doing anyway because the buff is so much more convenient to manage. The number of triple espresso shots that you need to cook is 223, and I go a little bit over, but it's fine because I'll just drink the rest. If you don't have the coffee, you can buy 669 from Gus's shop. If you have the money to spend, this is one of the easiest key quests to complete. More mining. And Uda Lolly, on the morning of day 28, our pumpkin harvest is ready, and I have quite a few of the big boys. That's hopefully gonna keep our kegs busy until I'm ready to convert Ginger Island. Glorious timing, more pumpkins become more pumpkin juice. After the harvest and rotating all of the kegs, I'm up at the tree farm because I have more mystic syrup and more mystic trees grown ripe for tappers. Heavy tappers. And my last hurrah on the final day of fall year two is dealing with this Ginger Island farm again. Embrace the chaos and fill in all the blank spots with wheat. Also, I'm not sure if I've shown my ostrich all grown up yet. Aw, oh, good day, mate. Say hi, Moza. The real reason I'm in here is to grab the now processed dino mayonnaise for the theater slash missing bundle. But that's gonna be a wrap for the fall of year two. 
taking another quick gander at how the farm's doing, our total earnings are just over 8 million gold now, with 843k in hand. My efforts doing key quests and in the mines have provided another 96 key gems. And our social standings are actually pretty decent considering all I've done is convenience conversations and salads. Those who are well versed in this game will notice that even though I have 130 golden walnuts, somebody's missing from this tab. I'll figure that one out next month. Our powers are definitely filling out, only needing three more and knowledge from one more book, which is crab pots. Taking a look at our logs real quick, our shipping and fishing is definitely filling out more, but we have some work to do. It's when I get to the artifacts and minerals tab that, yeah, I'm still looking for those same three items. I will find them eventually. The cooking tab is looking not so filled out, but the good news is, is that I do know most of these recipes. I just need the ingredients and to actually cook them. The achievements as well are filling out quite nicely, looks like we've got about half to go. I've gotten a lot done, but there's still work to do. I want to extend a special thank you to all of those generous enough to support the channel through YouTube memberships, Patreon, and Super Chat. Your generosity makes this content possible for everyone out there to enjoy. From the bottom of my shell, thank you so much. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. Watching all the way until the end and your engagement helped my channel so much. So if you feel like I've earned it, consider leaving a like and comment about the run, what you'd like to see in the future, or just to say hi. Hello. If you'd like to keep up with my future releases, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to never miss a video. Until next time, take care everyone.